All right, let's go ahead and clean up our flux here, and then we will be ready to install our new coils. Oh, what the heck? This is an iPad Pro 12.9 second generation with no backlight. You can see I have the battery isolated already. And if we look over to the side here, another interesting thing is that one of these threaded barrels is completely missing from the board. That's not the only thing. I'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, it tends to happen with these. They fail a little differently as far as how the backlight goes out on these. Generally, if you check around the connectors here, you won't find that burnt filter that uh, normally shows itself on the previous generation and other models of iPads. What happens with these is that they tend to blow out the backlight diodes. So if we move up the board here this direction and just look along the edge over here right where this little metal shielding is you can see that this diode has just kind of split itself in half and this is pretty common with this particular model and I would recommend uh, if you can try to get a look at both of these but what I usually do is just go ahead and replace both of these diodes just to be safe. Uh, this one might still be good, but we need to peel the metal back so far just to even inspect it that I usually just go ahead and swap both of these out. These are the same diodes that they've been using for years, like all the way back to the iPad minis and I think even maybe the original iPad or the iPad 2. So they're pretty common and uh, interesting that this fails this way, but we need to go ahead and remove both of these. And if we look over here, you'll see that between the CPU and the power management IC, we are actually missing coils off the motherboard. And this is another thing about these very lightweight, uh, somewhat flexible iPads, at least in the earlier generations, is that any tension on the surface of these things will just cause these coils to pop right off the board. So do keep an eye out for that if you happen to open one of these up. I'll show you here in just a second. I actually found one of them rolling around inside of the housing. So this is one of the missing coils, and you'll see when we flip it over that it is broken away from the connection that sits on the bottom of it. So there's really no way to reattach this. That's going to go in the trash. We'll have to remove those little mounting brackets and then replace these just completely. All right, let's go ahead and get to work on these diodes. I do want to point out that I am working on the motherboard inside of the housing. So because I'm using hot air, I do have some metal material covering the battery to kind of prevent it from getting too hot. Obviously proceeded with any of these kind of repairs at your own risk, but do be aware that anytime you're working with hot air near a battery, there is some serious potential risk involved with that.
All right, so the diodes are looking good. All we have to do is get these coils replaced. And you'll see that I went through a couple different processes here trying to figure out which one I like the best. I thought that my hot tweezers would work out well. And turns out those aren't really necessary. Sometimes they're helpful, but there are a number of ways to go about this. But a regular pair of tweezers, some leaded solder, and hot air should make this uh, pretty easy for you. Now keep an eye on that sick looking coil as I go to clean here. Yep, guess it was time for this one to be replaced as well.
All right, if we did everything correctly, we should have a backlight and an image here momentarily. The only awkward thing about this is keeping the battery connected and hitting the power button at the same time. All right, we have an apple. And there we go. We'll check the touch, and it looks like we have a working tablet.